Today we will discuss the exchange force model. We can start with the concept of saturation character of nuclear forces. The two outstanding properties of the nuclear matter are the first one, the nuclear density is approximately constant which leads to the relation R equal to R0 areas to 1 by 3 for the nuclear radius where this R is the nuclear radius and R0 is a constant. This equation is not due and this A is the mass number and from this you can write the expression for volume etc and there you can see that the nuclear density is almost constant and the constant binding energy per nucleus. Both the above facts imply that and I will you, uh, I think there is no explanation is needed for this you know the uh, mass binding energy per nucleon curve and you can see that it is almost constant over a wide range. So both the above facts imply that binding energy and volume of nuclei are proportional to A and here you can see that volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube that means uh, it will be 4 by 3 pi r cube will be r0 a raised to 1 by 3 the whole cube which means that it will be r0 cube da that means volume is proportional to a that you can say <laughs> and also the binding energy is proportional to mass number that means binding energy per nucleon means binding energy divided by a equal to constant so you can see that uh, when A increases in order to keep binding energy per nucleon constant, binding energy should also increase. That is why binding energy per nucleon or binding energy by A is constant. That means binding energy increases with A and decreases with A. That is a concept. That means binding energy is proportional to A and that is why that is what we have mentioned here. So, uh, from these two concepts, we are getting this. That means binding energy and volume of nuclei are proportional to A, the mass number. But the statement is not consistent with the result we have obtained on the basis of low energy scattering experiments, which gives equal interaction between all pairs of nucleons in the nucleus. That means, uh, when mass number increases more binding energy as per our this concept which means that the strength of nuclear force is more that is why it has more binding energy but it is not true we have shown that or we can show based on experiments that equal interaction is there between all pairs of nucleons in the nucleus in the nucleus with the mass number A, there are A into A minus 1 divided by 2 pairs and this number you can easily verify. Suppose you have a nucleus with the mass number say 4. So how much pairs you can form and you just number them, number the nucleons as 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first one can pair with the remaining three. So you have three pairs. The second one can pair with the other, that means first one that we have already considered. So second one pairs with the three and the four. That means first one you have three combinations. Second one you have two combinations that means with three and four. And the third one a combination with the 4 that means total 3 plus 2 plus 1 that is 6. So if you consider this equation it will be 4 into 4 minus 1 is 3. So 4 into 3 is 12, 12 by 2 is 6. So we are getting the same number. 
so that is this expression so in a nucleus with the mass number a there are a into a minus 1 whole divided by 2 pairs and hence binding energy will be proportional to this and this number you can approximate it as a square that means this is a squared minus a whole divided by 2 and that number is nearly a square that means binding energy is proportional to a square so that means binding energy means that energy you are getting due to the uh, interaction of nucleons and you can have this a into a minus 1 divided by 2 number of pairs so uh, when number of pairs increases there will be more binding energy that is a concept that is why you can say that binding energy is proportional to a square but if binding energy per nucleon is constant which means that binding energy is proportional to a so this is contradict to the above mentioned properties that means binding energy proportional to a that we have uh, just mentioned in the first slide and now we are saying that binding energy is proportional to a square so this is the contradict so but the property 1 and 2 are the observed as well as verified properties so the properties first and second mentioned above are referred to as the saturation property of nuclear matter and consequently of nuclear force to account the saturation character of nuclear force that means there is a discrepancy here so how it is working heisenberg proposed that nuclear forces are of exchange type this is analogous to the chemical bonding forces arising out of exchange of electrons between the atoms in molecule that means the nuclear force between two nucleons is arising out of they are exchanging something between them when they are coming closer they will exchange some something and due to that exchange they are binding together and this is the concept of exchange force and it was proposed by Heisen and based on this uh, a theory was developed by Yukawa. Next is Yukawa's theory. The application of quantum mechanics to electromagnetic field surrounding a charged particle leads to the conclusion that the electrical force, that means electromagnetic force, is exerted by the transfer of a photon. There, the exchange particle is photon. Similarly, you are saying that in gravitational field, the exchange particle is graviton. Thus, photon is referred to as the field particle of electromagnetic field from one charged body to the other. And Yukawa proposed that the strong interaction between nucleons might be accounted for in a similar manner by postulating an appropriate field particle of rest mass different from zero and you know that the rest mass of photon is zero and also the rest mass of graviton as you are saying it is also zero but the rest mass of the exchange particle in nuclear force is not zero and why it is not zero that we will mention the rest mass difference is from the view that nuclear force is short range while others are not. Your range of gravitational force is infinity. Similarly, range of electromagnetic force is infinity. You have the equation F is equal to Q1 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 by R square. That force F will be 0 only when R is infinity. Similar is the case with the gravitation. So, the range of electromagnetic force and gravitational force are infinity and there the exchange particle mass you are considering as C. But here our range is not infinity. It is a short range and for a short range the exchange particle should have a finite mass. And how it is for, uh, getting like that? 
that we can see. This exchange particle were given name mesotron or meson. And then meso means intermediate, that is mass intermediate between a nucleon and an electron. The rest mass m pi of the field particle can be computed as follows. When one nucleon exerts force on the other, meson is created and the creation of meson violates the conservation of energy by amount delta E corresponding to meson rest mass. So in a system, it has a, 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 a definite number of energy. So when an additional particle is created, an additional amount of energy is creating. So which means that uh, it is violating actually your law of conservation of energy. And that means an additional amount of energy is creating and that you can write as its rest mass is rest mass energy is delta e is equal to m pi c square where m pi is the mass of that created particle that you are calling as the meson. And the duration of the excursion, excursion means uh, the traveling or the field particle is uh, moving or traveling from one nucleon to the other. So that is the term excursion, that means traveling of meson. Delta T, the duration of the excursion of meson, delta T is given by uncertainty principle as you have the equation delta cross. So delta E into delta T approximately equal to H cross. That means delta T you can write as H cross by delta E. And in this time, meson can, can cover a distance R0 given by R0 is equal to C delta T. Distance is velocity into time. And now you can substitute for this delta T as H cross by delta E. So it is C H cross by delta T R0. Again, substituting for delta E, R0 becomes CH cross by M pi C square. Once C cancel, so it is H cross by M pi C. And if M pi equal to 0, if this is 0, R0 equal to infinity. But here R0 is not infinity. That means our nuclear range has a finite value. So if this is finite, m pi cannot be zero. So based on this, that means your nuclear forces has short ranges. You are saying that our exchange particle has a mass. And if you assume the range of nuclear force R0 as 1.4 femtometer, you can calculate this R0 as H cross by m pi c. From m, that will m pi is equal to H cross by R0 c. Substituting for H cross, R0 and C, you are getting M pi as 0 0.25 and that is to minus 27 kilogram. And actually this is in between your electron mass. Electron, electron mass is less than this value. And also you have 6.6 in address to minus 27 as the nuclear mass. So this is in between that. That is why you are calling it as the mesotron or uh, mesotron means intermediate particle. If m e is the rest mass of electron, that means so when you are finding the ratio of mass of this meson and mass of electron, you can roughly calculate it as 270. That means your meson mass is 270 times that of electron. And as you know, mass of proton or neutron is nearly 1860 times mass of electron and the lightest of the mesons, the pi meson or simply pi or is responsible for the nucleon nucleon potential and that is why you have already marked the mass as m pi. So that meson you are calling as the pi meson and to satisfy all the varieties of the exchanges needed in the two nucleon system, there must be three pions with the electric charges of plus one, that means plus
plus 0 and minus 1. The pions have spin 0 and the rest energy is of 139.6 MeV and 135.0 MeV. And this 139.6 MeV you can find for pi plus and pi minus. That is why pi plus or minus here. So, a pi plus meson or pi plus pi on means this is its mass and its charge is plus 1. And for pi minus also, same rest mass energy but charge minus 1. So, it is minus 1, your electronic charge. And for pi 0, that means a neutral pi on, the mass is somewhat less. And the differing masses for the charged and neutral, neutral pi ions may explain the possible small violation of charge independence we discussed previously. And in the charge independence character, we have shown that there is a small, there is a variation in the scattering length. And we have there mentioned that this is due to a small variation in the wave function. And there we have mentioned that we can exchange it based on, we can explain it based on the exchange particle model. So, that is the reason here. So, due to this difference, you are getting that. And at the time of Yukawa's proposal, no particle was in existence with the rest mass between the electron rest mass and the proton rest mass. And before actually the discovery of pion, the muon was, that is you are calling it as the mu meson, was discovered and considered as the Yukawa particle. And later on, it was discarded on the ground that it has no neutral member and possesses half spin. So actually first you have uh, discovered the mu meson but now you know that it is a lepton and it is not a me uh, like a boson particle but and uh, its spin is half and it has no neutral one actually it is a lepton and these things you will discuss in your elementary particle section. So, now we have the concept that due to the exchange of pions, that means you have three types of pions, that means pi mesons, nuclear force is existing and how that exchange is taking place, that we can see. The force field between two protons or neutrons is carried by a neutral pion. And the force between a neutron and a proton is carried either by a neutral pion or charged pion. In the case of charged pion, conversion of one nucleon to other takes place. And we can explain these situations. So, you, this, uh, you can see the first one. This n1 plus n2 means you have two neutrons. So, when they are there, so the first neutron is now becoming a neutron plus a pi zero. That means you are neutral pi. And that neutral pi on is going to your the second neutron and it is when it is added with your second neutron again you are getting the second neutron that means you have neutron and a neutron this pi zero is moving between them so after that exchange the first one is it is given a neutron sorry, given a neutral pion and it is accepted by the second neutron. So, the initial state n1 plus n2 
after again n1 percent and a similar case you can see with the protons there also the neutral pi on is exchanging and you can see that uh, similarly you can exchange this neutral pi on with the n plus p as well as p plus n so this n a pi on is created and that pi on is accepted by your proton so n plus p so the in the first four cases you have the exchange of pi zero particles and now you see the n plus p character by a transfer of charge pi on there this n is becoming a proton plus pi minus and that pi minus is given to a proton so this pi minus plus proton is changing as a neutron here you can see the conservation of charge this is positive negative so zero positive negative again zero so the neutron which was initially there it is it has changed to a proton and it transferred that uh, pi meson negative pi pi on originated with that proton to another proton and by accepting that pi minus particle that proton became a neutron so neutron becomes proton and proton is changed to neutron so initially you have n plus p and the final stage in place of n you have p and in place of p you have n so the final one is p plus n and a similar transfer between p and n but here the charged particle you are is pi plus so p equals n plus pi p plus that pi p plus with the n is p so these are the six type of pi on transfer you can have and for the first four the neutral one and for the and we have mentioned here uh, between n n and between p p it is uh, the neutral pi on and between n and p or p and n either a neutral pi on or charged pi on is transferred and in the first four cases the neutron and proton do not exchange charge when they interact still they have to exchange a meson which carries the transferred momentum uh, since pi meson have mass so a momentum has been transferred there in the last two cases a meson transform charge as well as momentum between the two nucleons the above interpretation implies that an isolated neutron should be surrounded by a meson field which sometimes contain a pi zero meson and sometimes a pi minus meson so neutron means you can consider it as made up of proton and pi meson actually this is uh, you have to consider the quark composition we are not going to that range we are just considering it as the proton plus pi minus meson similarly an isolated proton should be surrounded by a meson field of pi zero meson and sometimes a pi plus meson it should be noted that the proton field cannot contain a pi minus meson and the neutron field cannot contain a pi plus meson and these predictions have been experimentally verified the meson exchange can be represented by a potential in the basic form r raised to minus 1 that means your potential v will be r raised to minus 1 e raised to minus r by r where this capital r is the range of nuclear forms and now we will explain or we can have some support for the presence of this exchange forces and the first one we have making a comparison with the atomic field and then we have an experimental verification a given nucleon seems to attract only a small number of near neighbors that means our saturation property but it also repels at small distances to keep those neighbors from getting too close 
we encounter exactly the same sort of behavior in molecules. When we bring two atoms together to form a diatomic molecule, such as one with the covalent bonding, electrons are shared or exchanged between the two atoms. And a stable molecule forms with the atoms in equilibrium separated by a certain distance. If we try to force the atoms closer together, the overlap of the filled electronic shells causes a strong repulsive force. Furthermore, approaching the molecule with the third atom may result only in a weak forces between the first two atoms and the third. That means suppose you have H2, you can't add simply another hydrogen to that. And you can't make uh, the particles much closer by extracting a force etc. That means they will be repelling. So the similar case you can see in nuclear physics or between the nucleons. Uh, a nucleon can interact only with a limited number of other nucleons, a saturation character, as well as you can't make them closer. None are available to form new bonds. Nuclear forces show a similar saturation character. And another argument in favor of the exchange force model comes from the study of NP scattering. And the first one we have mentioned is just a comparison. And in NP scattering at high energies, you can see that figure shows the NP differential cross section. And this is the d sigma by d omega. d sigma by d omega is the differential cross section. And this is theta cm. You are measuring the angle in the center of mass concentration. And you can see that the differential cross section is maximum at 0 degree as well as at 180 degree. So 0 and 180 degree. So, there is a strong peak in the cross section at forward angles near 0 degree corresponding to a small momentum transfer between the projectile and the target. That means the incident particle and the uh, colliding target. And for the energies shown in figure, the calculation of the angle theta for maximum momentum transfer, this gives values in the range of 10 degree or smaller. We certainly do not expect to see a peak at 180 degree, although it is tempting to regard this backward peak in the center of mass frame as a result of head-on collision in which the incident particle has its motion reversed. Our estimate above indicates such an explanation is not likely to be correct. And uh, you are measuring that angle in center of mass reference frame and not in your laboratory frame of reference. And uh, actually this is the case. This is the center of mass reference frame. This is the center of mass. You are assuming that the both the particles are coming to the center of mass. Center of mass is at rest. And after you have collision, the particles are moving here and this is the angle theta. And this is the normal case you are you can visualize that is your laboratory frame after collision they are moving like this. So this case we are mentioning. So uh, when after collision if the you have a center of mass and uh, from that center of mass it is the first particle if it is coming towards center of mass and after that it is moving. And the second one, if it is nearer to center of mass, you can see that it is like this. It is coming to here, here and this is will be moving to away from the center of mass in negative direction and this is to positive direction. So this angle, so if this angle is zero or very small, that movement will be like this, like this here and here here. So, this angle is very small. Okay. So,
you can you are saying that uh, regard this backward peak that means it is like this if this particle is moving like here moving to this side this this is the angle that angle you are getting as 180 degree that means it is for a head on collision it is coming towards center of mass and again moving in the same track and for such a head on collision only you are getting this angle as 180 degree and uh, here in this graph you can see that this is the differential cross section there must be a number of particles getting, uh, uh, giving that result, then only you will be getting such a high result. So, such a possibility is not possible. So, this is uh, not, uh, it is discarded and you can't consider that as a head-on collision. So, how now you can explain? That means you are, uh, actually you are measuring that angle. So, almost uh, you just assume you have two nucleons, uh, you have a nucleon system and you are measuring the position of neutrons coming and you are see that nearer to zero degree you are getting maximum neutrons. Then P scattering and again you are getting the same at uh, nearly 180 degree. That means you have to place the uh, detector in the opposite direction towards the direction of your incident P. So, there the possibility of head on collision is not there. How now it is possible? And this we have mentioned this is the angle, and this angle it is like this it is moving here, and this is moving here. That means this angle is very small, and when it is moving backward, then only 180 degree is possible. And for the second particle, this angle you can consider as 180 minus theta. Okay. And the peak at 0 degree can be explained in terms of absorption and uh, diffraction of neutron in the scattering medium. And the backward peak at, peak at 180 degree is the result of exchange forces that we have just mentioned. That is, N and P interchange identity in the collision. Therefore, equal mixture of ordinary and exchange forces provide the observed result. That means, this is the normal case you have. That means, you are expecting and when this is a neutron and this is a proton and when they are coming closer by the exchange of pions. That means neutron becoming proton and proton becoming neutron. There you have C, a neutron becoming proton plus pi C, pi minus, and by accepting that pi minus, proton is becoming neutron. So, initially this is neutron, this is proton, and after collision, that means this is proton and this is neutron. And here, it is moving the after collision it will move like this and this will move like this so this angle that means the particle that was initially it was initially a neutron after scattering it became a proton and uh, you are not measuring the proton intensity but the neutron intensity that means actually you have measuring this intensity and that angle, if this angle is theta, this will be 180 minus theta. And if this is very small, this will be nearly 180 degree. So, there, uh, here also, the scattering angle is very small, of the order of 0 or nearly 0 or very small. But now that particle is not neutral, it has changed to proton. So, based on this concept, you can explain the peak at 180. You see this? We have already mentioned this. You have a proton and neutron. So, 
the neutron this proton you can change to n plus pi plus and this pi plus will move to n and now this is n and this pi plus change it to a pi plus plus n will give you a proton now proton neutron becomes a neutron proton they have changed the places in summary both the saturation of nuclear forces and the strong backward peak in np scattering are explained by exchange forces in the former case something is exchanged between nucleons to produce a sort of saturated bond and the second case something is exchanged between nucleons and actually changes their character so this experiment is a strong evidence for the exchange character that means they are exchanged in something and that something you are calling as the pi meso and just now we have mentioned uh, and this is enough for us the transfer of a single pion is responsible for the nuclear fields but in a shorter range that means uh, less than 1 fermi 0.5 to 1 fermi two pion exchange is probably responsible for the nuclear binding that means you can see that uh, at that range the nuclear force is somewhat more strong because normally you are taking at about that 1.4 meter as the meson range so there two pions will be transferring and at very short ranges that means less than the 0.5 fermi and you have the concept that when the distance is less than 0.5 fermi that value you have mentioned as 0.49 fermi or femtometer uh, there is a strong repulsive core so the force is becoming repulsive so the exchange of there a special type of another meson known as the omega meson which has some larger mass may contribute to the repulsive core and the exchange of rho mesons this has also a somewhat high mass compared to the previous we have mentioned may provide the spin orbit part of the you have some spin orbit interaction that we have mentioned so this rho mesons are responsible for the spin orbit interaction and omega mesons for the repulsive core and that all thank you